and welcome to Fayette County Public Library Storytime. Our first story today is The Plot Chickens. Here we have some plot chickens over a typewriter of all things. I think this chicken's funny with the glasses hanging off her beak. <laughs> Henrietta loved to read. Soon she had read every book on the farm a dozen times, so she went to town to find more. When she spotted people carrying books out of the library, she went inside to wait in line. When it was Henrietta's turn, the librarian said, We have nothing for chickens here. Try the feed store. Frustrated, Henrietta clucked at the top of her lungs. Bok, bok, bok. Well, why didn't you say so? The librarian handed her three books. Henrietta was in reading ecstasy. Every day she read to her aunts, then returned the books to the library for more. One day, Henrietta said, Reading books is so much fun. Writing books must be exhilarating. She searched the shelves until she found a book about writing. The librarian was impressed. When she got home, Henrietta read, Rule one, you need a main character. That's me, Aunt, said Aunt Goldie. I'm the main hen here. The character should be interesting. That's me! No me! Aunt Golda won because she was the oldest. Henrietta found a typewriter and began to peck out a story. Once upon a time, there was a hen named Aunt Golda. Rule two, you need to hatch a plot. A plot of land? No, plot is what happens in the story. It starts with rule three. Give your main character a problem. Oh, I don't want any problems. Me neither. No way. Then I'll make up a character. Once upon a time, there was a hen named Maxine. Rule four. Develop your plot by asking, what if? Hmm, what if Maxine goes into the woods alone? Her mother should tell her that's dangerous. Maxine went walking alone in the woods, even though her mother told her it was dangerous. Something bad will happen. A wolf might be following her. Suddenly, Maxine saw a wolf following her down the path. Then the wolf catches Maxine. The end. Good story. Maxine can't be caught. She must save herself. What if she shoots the wolf with the cyberspace ray gun? That's funny looking. The wolf is toast. The end. Good story. We've got one hand trying to end this story too fast. That's silly. Hens don't have guns. Rule five, write what you know. What if she hides? We hide from hawks every day. Maxine hid under a bush. Then the wolf gets bored and leaves. The end. Good story. He can't leave yet. Rule six, build suspense. Build a fence? The wolf sniffed. I smell a delicious young hen nearby. He started creeping toward Maxine's hiding place. Then he eats her. The end. Good story. Ugh. That hen's in too much of a hurry. Not yet. Rule seven. Make your story come alive by using all five senses. Maxine heard the wolf growl as he came closer. She saw his sharp teeth and smelled his Woofy body odor. Ooh. When he was nearer still, she felt the heat of his icky breath. 
When he stuck his head through the leaves, Maxine tasted the bile rising from her gizzard. Then Maxine dies of fright. The end, good story. That is not the end. Endings are the hardest part. Maxine's mother swoops in to save her in the nick of time. No, rule eight, the main character must solve her or his own problem. Maxine gathered her courage. Then she plunged her sharp beak into the tip of the wolf's tender nose. The wolf howled in pain and ran off, never to be seen again. The end. Hmm. Good story. It's not a good story. It's a great story. Now I'll revise it until it's perfect, then send it to a publisher. Dear publisher, I am sending you The Perils of Maxine, a book about a chicken. I am well qualified to write this story because I am a chicken. I know how a chicken thinks and feels and what a chicken likes to read. Excitedly yours, Henrietta. Many, many months later, the publisher sent a rejection letter. Dear Miss Henrietta, your story we cannot publish is written, we cannot publish books written by chickens. Even if we did, we wouldn't want this one. We didn't like it. Don't quit your day job. Have a nice life, Hunter Fox, editor. The ants were devastated, but Henrietta vowed not to brood over her rejection. Looks to me like she's got a plan. I'll make my own books, she said. So instead of this being a cider press, now she's going to make it a book press so that she can make her own books. <laughs> yellow, yellow plus magenta, yellow magenta plus cyan, yellow magenta cyan plus black. Hmm, that made a pretty good picture, didn't it? When her books were finished, Henrietta gave one to the librarians. Your book should be reviewed, the librarian said. Send it to the corn book. So Henrietta mailed it off. <laughs> when the corn book review came out, it said, Henrietta, The Perils of Maxine, one dozen pages, Cider Press. Henrietta lays an egg with her first book. We hope this is her last book. The Perils of Maxine shows why chickens shouldn't ever write. It is odoriferous. Noah Luke. Odoriferous means it stinks. End of story. Poor Henrietta, do you see the teardrop? Might be kind of hard to see. She's got a teardrop. I'm going to keep writing, Henrietta said. But her feelings were hurt. And a little voice inside of her kept saying, chickens shouldn't ever write. Henrietta's heart wasn't into writing anymore. She even stopped going to the library. But her aunts missed hearing Henrietta read. So they bugged her until she went to get some books. Henrietta was embarrassed. Had the librarian seen that awful review? Look at her hiding from the librarian here. Look here. The Perils of Maxine by Henrietta voted best book of the year by our Story Hour children. Look at Henrietta, she's so excited. The children love your book. Will you read it to them? When Henrietta went into the story room, the children cheered. She read with dramatic expression. Of course, all the children heard was buck, 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 but it didn't matter. They knew the story by heart. And there's the story, The Perils of Maxine, on the last page.
That's so funny. It's a silly book. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Miss Lisa, what do you have today? Well, I have another silly book for you. You may have heard about the little old lady who swallowed the fly. Well, our book today is called There Was an Old Lady Who Swallowed a Shell. So let's see what happens to her as she swallows the shell. All right. Let's get into our book here. All right, here we go. There was an old lady who swallowed a shell. I don't know why she swallowed the shell. Shh, she didn't tell. So it sounds like she knows why she swallowed it, but we don't. There was an old lady who swallowed a crab. Why did she grab that crawling crab? Well, she swallowed the crab to live in the shell. Now, I don't know why she swallowed the shell. Shh, she didn't tell. So there's the shell, and there's the crab. There was an old lady who swallowed a fish. What a tickly dish, that swimming fish. Now, what do you think? Why did she swallow this one and not the little one? <laughs> Look at that big fish. Do you see that she's on the beach? There's lots of other things that might have gone down easier than that giant fish. Let's find out. <clears throat> well, she swallowed the fish to catch the crab. She sm swallowed the crab to live in the shell. I don't know why she swallowed that shell. Shh, she didn't tell. That crab going to do inside that fish's tummy? <laughs> there was an old lady who swallowed a gull. Look at that seagull go down her throat. Oh my goodness. It wasn't dull to swallow a gull. I guess not. Look at all those feathers coming off. I think she'd be coughing quite a bit to try to swallow that gull. <laughs> all those feathers get stuck in her throat. Look at her puppy dog hanging onto her leg. I guess the gull's trying to fly off with her. She swallowed the gull to scoop up the fish. Makes sense, right? She swallowed the fish to catch the crab. She swallowed the crab to live in the shell. I don't know why she swallowed that shell. She didn't tell. Okay, she's still on the beach. What else is she gonna swallow? Well, there was an old lady who swallowed the pail. She didn't wail when she swallowed the pail. You guys know what wail means? Wail means to scream and to cry out loud. I think if I tried to swallow a pail, I would wail. Mm -hmm. But this little lady, she's pretty tough. She's already swallowed a whole bunch of things. Well, she swallowed the pail to carry the gull. And she swallowed the gull to scoop up the fish. She swallowed the fish to catch the crab and she swallowed the crab to live in the shell. I don't know why she swallowed that shell. She didn't tell. All right, now she's still on the beach. Oh, now look what she's doing. Boys and girls, don't ever do what she's doing. <laughs> this is not a good idea, okay? She swallowed, uh, there was an old lady who swallowed some sand. Yuck, boys and girls, don't put sand in your mouth. <laughs> Oh, how bland to swallow the sand. Yeah, I'd say so. Yuck. So now she swallowed that sand to fill up the pail. She swallowed the pail to carry the gull. Now, if the pail is full of sand, how's it going to carry the gull? Hmm. <laughs> she swallowed the gull to scoop up the fish. She swallowed the fish to catch the crab. And she swallowed the crab to live in the shell. And I don't know why she swallowed the shell. She did not tell. Mm. There was an old lady who swallowed a wave. Swallowing a wave was such a big hassle. <laughs> Look at all the things in this wave. Oh, boys and girls, if she's at the beach, if she's at the ocean, don't ever put salt water in your mouth. Don't do what this old lady's doing. Oh, my goodness. Look, there goes, I don't know what that is, a little amoeba. You got little fish, and you got, I don't know what that is. You got some more sh uh, fish. All of that wave is going into her mouth. 
but it said it was a big hassle. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Boys and girls, she burped. And look, all of this stuff comes out of her mouth. Look at it all go. And it built a sandcastle. <laughs> now, I don't know, it's a pretty silly story, don't you think? But there's the sandcastle. You see all the things that she swallowed? What'd she swallow? There's the shell, there's the crab. Okay, what else, what came next? And we have the fish, right? And she swallowed the gull and then the pail and the, well, the, sand, the wave or the sand, the sand and then the wave. So when it all came back out, it built the sandcastle. Pretty interesting story, pretty crazy if you ask me. <laughs> okay, so now boys and girls, if you went to the beach, I sure hope you don't do like this lady does. If you go to the beach, maybe you and your family want to go fishing. Now I have some pictures here of some things that you might need when you go fishing. And I also have some pictures of how you go fishing. So let's take a look. Here is a boy, he's just fishing off the end of the pier, isn't he? Here is a pole with a worm on it. Here is a little girl with a fish on her plate. Here is a man. He's all decked out, ready to go fishing, isn't he? And he's got a fish on his hook. Here is a little boy just walking with his fishing pole. We got some worms for fish to eat. We got a net. Oh, look here, we got a campfire with a fish on the plate. Look at this, boys and girls. You know somebody who has a hat like that? Got all the little <laughs> things that you could put on the end of the pole to try to catch fish. Here's another pole, but it doesn't have a worm on it. And then we have a pail. Now, the idea, boys and girls, is to take a look at all of these pictures and put them in order. So if you are a child and your family is going fishing, what would you have to gather together to make a good fishing trip? That's what we need to think about first. So take a look at these pictures. What are some things that a fisherman needs to go fishing? Hmm, let's say, I think the very first thing you need is a fishing pole. Right? We need a fishing pole to go fishing. In other words, you're not going to catch a fish, are we? Let's move this over. I think another thing, I hope you noticed right away, boys and girls, that we need worms. Okay? So a fishing pole and worms, those are some very important things. And that's probably all you would really need. But what else is on here that you would need to go fishing? Some people like to catch their fish in a net. And once it gets caught in the net, where do you put it? Which picture else do we need up there? We need the pail, don't we? Okay, so you might want to put all your fish in the pail. There's one other thing that some fishermen love to wear. This sort of helps you know that they're a fisherman when they're wearing that special fisherman hat, huh? All right, so now boys and girls, we have six pictures left. And we need to put these in order. If you are a person going fishing, what would be the first thing that happens? If you look at these six pictures, what would happen first? Hmm, do you stand and fish? Do you put the worm on the fishing pole? Do you walk somewhere? Do you eat your fish? Do you have a fish on the pole or do you cook it? What do you think happens first? Well, I sure hope you said that you need to get to the fishing place, right? You need to walk to the fishing hole. So here he's got his, his gear on him, he's got his hat, he's got his pole, and he is walking to wherever there's water that he can go fishing. All right, so out of the next pictures, let's go ahead and move this one down. What out of the next pictures would happen next? So he's going to walk to the fishing hole, and then what's he going to do? I hope you can see this picture. He's going to stand there and wait. Now, if you've ever been fishing, you might know that this is what you do most of the time when you're fishing, right? You wait and you wait and you wait. You might be in a boat. You might be on the land. You might be on a dock. But you wait and you wait and you wait. That's what this guy's doing. He's just waiting and waiting and waiting to catch his fish. Now, can you catch your fish without something on the end of the pole? I hope you guys realized I just made a mistake. 
What do you have to do first? Can you just put the line in the water and expect a fish to be caught? No wonder that guy's standing there forever, right? All right, so let's scoot this over because what we have to do next is bait your hook, right? We need something on that hook for the fish to eat. So we go walk into the pole, we walk to the watering hole, we bait our hook with our fish and then with our with our worm, and then we wait and we wait for the fish to finally get on it. So I have the three pictures that are left. I hope you see what comes next. If you go fishing, you hopefully you're gonna be like this guy. Yay, I have my fish. Okay, the fish ate the worm and he is on the end of his line there. And then of the two pictures that are left, what would come next? Boys and girls, I sure hope you pick this one. Because I don't think you'd want to eat raw fish. So let's cook our fish. <laughs> cook our fish next. And then we're going to put it on our plate and eat it up. So this is what you do when you go fishing. Gather your things together. Walk to the place to go fishing. Bait your hook. Stand for a while or sit in a boat and wait for the fish to nibble on your worm. And then you stand nice and proud with your fish on your pole. Cook it up and eat it. So that is how you go fishing. I hope you've enjoyed this activity. I think Miss Kim has another book for us today. Oh, this next book is a statement that I hate to hear anybody say. Yeah, me too. I can't stand it. I'm bored. Yeah. There are too many things to do to be bored. <laughs> so, just saying. <laughs> One of my pet peeves. Yep. <laughs> Can't stand for somebody to say that I'm bored. But there we have a little girl. I'm bored. Bored. Blah. I'm so bored. Hey, a potato. A potato? What am I supposed to do with a potato? And she threw it up in the air. Hmm. Ow! You see the potato came down, hit her on the head, bounced away, fell back on the ground. And the potato said, I'm bored. Hmm, you want to do something? Sure. What do you like to do? I don't know. I like flamingos. There are no flamingos around here, potato. Well, that's disappointing. I'm Bored. How can a potato be bored? Because I have to hang out with the kid. Kids are boring. What are you talking about? Kids are fun. Prove it. We can turn cartwheels. Boring. And skip. Boring. Or spin around in circles until we get so dizzy we almost throw up. Boring. Kids can play games and do ninja kicks. Boring. Boring. And walk on our hands, see? Boring. Hmm. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? This little girl who was so bored has found an awful lot of fun things to do. You know what else? Kids can imagine stuff. What kind of stuff? Like this, see? Now I'm a famous ballerina. Boring. Mm. 
Now I'm a lion tamer with the most ferocious lion in the world. Boring. Oh yeah? Well now I'm a fairy princess with my own castle and dragons and unicorns and stuff. Boring. He's snoring, the potato's snoring. Kids can swing, boring. Kids can jump, boring. Kids can fly, boring. Kids can do anything. She's yodeling. Yodelayoli, boring, boring. Now she's jamming with the boom box, boring. Now she's like a pirate on a pirate ship, boring, 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 boring. Look at her now. She dressed like a potato. Boring. <laughs> I guess he thinks potatoes are boring himself. <laughs> <laughs> How can you possibly think kids are boring when we can do all this cool stuff and think all these amazing thoughts and be anything we want to be? I'd rather be a kid than a potato any day. Look at the potato's face. Oh dear. Turn these pages. Oh, she walks away. Look at this. It's like she's so frustrated. And the potato looks mad. And then the potato says, oh, hey, a flamingo. Now we can finally have some fun. The flamingo said, I'm bored. <laughs> well, what do you think, boys and girls? You think that girl should have been so bored? Mm -hmm. I mean, she found so many fun and amazing things yeah, to did. do. And, you know, with, with school coming to a close pretty soon, it's not too far off. I know you're going to find lots of amazing things to do all summer long, and I'm not expecting any of you who are listening today to say, I'm, I'm bored, because <laughs> it's just no good. Nope. All right, we hope you enjoyed the stories today. Hope you have a wonderful day today, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.